Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Sammy. On my channel, we do DIYs with signs. There is always tons of laughter. If you stick around to the end of the video, you will find out what I am talking about. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I wanted to give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, let's go ahead and get on to these farmhouse DIYs. So we're gonna start with this carbon gray stain. Four of these crates from Dollar Tree, you are gonna stain the front, the back, the sides, the insides, all of it. After we are done doing all four of these, we are gonna go ahead and start measuring our paint sticks. So I grabbed some of the shorter paint sticks we're gonna measure across here, and then we are going to basically, what do I say, tape that off, measure it off, you know what I'm saying. And then I'm gonna take my little table saw here and we are going to cut that. Now, it's not like the easiest saw, but it is convenient. Um, and we are gonna cut those down to size. Now, y'all, I got this inspiration from Missy Jones on like a Dollar Tree um, Facebook page. I asked her permission if I could use her DIY, and she said yes. I will show you her version um, after this. All right, so now that everything is stained, we're gonna go ahead and connect our crates together. So I'm gonna use my Dollar Tree Super Glue hot glue for that immediate hold. We are going to put both of them together. Make sure you press in tight and that you got an even straight lines. Then we are going to take our other two and repeat the same thing. Super glue, hot glue, put them together, let them dry just a bit. Oh yeah, don't worry, I got more of those. All right, so after those two were connected, now we are going to connect one to the other so that we're stacking them on top. Sorry, you guys, for all these angles. I really didn't know how to record this one. All right, now taking our paint sticks. Now, Missy actually used the opposite side and painted one, two, three, four on it, which was so cute. But I actually really liked the like the numbers peeking out through the stain. So I chose to do it this way. And I'm just taking my detail gun and putting the hot glue on the borders and putting that on. There you go. So now we're going to move to the top. So we're taking these galvanized picture frames. We're taking the clips off. Set that on to the side because, you know, we save everything. And, oh, my gosh, when I saw her DIY, I was like, oh. You are a genius. So taking that same stain, I am just coating the frame so it all ties in, taking the backs of the frames off, taking the stickers off. Okay. So then taking the excess of the painter stick that we cut off, I'm gonna stain those up. So Missy used something in the middle on the top of her crates to make the roof of her house. Didn't know what it was, so this actually worked out extremely well. So taking some hot glue, I'm gonna put those sticks up there and this is gonna help connect our tin roof together. So I'm just lining the top with some hot glue. I am resting those tin picture frames on top, making sure that they're hanging off even on each side. Now taking wooden dowels, I am going to cut these to size. I wanted to make sure that our picture frames were attached, but I did not want to drown everything with hot glue. So I thought, you know what, let's cut some of these wooden dowels to size. I'll go ahead and stain them. I'm just using dog nail clippers here. And then we are going to put a strand of hot glue on them. I'll change kind of still, you can't really see, but we're going to put a strand of hot glue on it. And then we are going to basically wedge it in between the frame and the box that way our frame is connected to the dowel and the dowel is connected to the box if that makes sense then i go squirrel on on me on myself and i start thinking of other things so <laughs> then i cut another wooden dowel and stain that one because we'll eventually put it on the top but then i'm like oh wait girl you didn't even finish the other side of the roof yet so then i take that other short wooden dowel and then we're going to put a strand of hot glue on that stick it inside there you go so now it's it's totally connected it looks good 
Then taking this wooden dowel, we put that on the top, makes it look a little bit more finished in my opinion. All right, once that dries, we're going to take, I think this is cashew, even though I use plaster on like everything else in these DIYs, but I'm just distressing these down. I was trying to copy Missy's <laughs> and she, she distressed her. So I was like, I gotta distress mine too. So I should have probably done this before putting everything together. Um, I ended up distressing the back of the boxes, the back of the inside boxes, but not like the sides and everything since I was doing this as an instep, I guess you can say, but it ended up coming together very well. And look at how cute. Missy Jones, you are a genius because this is just darling. And I just realized too how like I have no knickknacks to put in here, but I will find some and I want to put this on my coffee bar. It is so gorgeous. I'm going to show you Missy's right now too, because hers looks way better than mine. Oh my gosh. Um, look at this is Missy Jones for this DIY we are gonna take the Dollar Tree sign I love the how simple this is it's just a rectangle we're gonna take the larger stir paint stir sticks we're gonna hold it up to our sign and we're going to measure this off and I am just marking it with a pencil I'm gonna take my table saw and we are going to just cut that now you guys are probably gonna say, attach it to your table so it doesn't move around. I don't wanna attach it to my table, okay? I just don't want to, I just don't. All right, now taking the remainder of that pin stick, we're gonna hold it up to our sign again, measure it off again, and then cut the top piece off. Then you're just going to keep basically restacking instead of like having to measure each and mark it with a pencil. I just stack it on top, just like I do here, use that as my measuring guide, then remove the top piece, cut away. All right, so after I'm done cutting all of those, I'm gonna sand the bottoms. I'm gonna make them all nice and smooth. Now we're going to, oh, I wanted to show you. Gosh, you guys, this ladybug vacuum is like everything. It's like heavy duty, even though it's a little baby tiny ladybug. But look at this. I even open it up just to show you guys how much it picks up. Look at that. That's in my Amazon store link, okay? All right, now with all those paint sticks, we're going in with that same carbon gray Varathene stain. You could use any stain color you'd like, and we are just going to stain all of our paint sticks. I do the front and the sides, but I do not do the backs because we're not gonna see it, so don't waste your product. Now we're gonna attach. So I always line my stuff up first because you just never know. So right here, I learn, okay, it's not gonna fit perfectly, so I'm gonna have to push it up just a little bit. So you're going to have a little bit of an overhang. No worries. I'm going to start from the bottom here, hot gluing it on, leave your other pieces there just so you know where to go. And then I could start moving my paint sticks and applying one at a time. Make sure you press them down firmly and that they are really close together so you don't mess up your placement here and then the little curves i rotate them from you know opposite sides you see the little curves all right now taking this tin welcome windmill i've never used one of these before and i thought oh i could just bend this back and forth back and forth then i started hearing cracking and i was like oh no we can't do that so then taking the little round piece i was able to bend that back forth it came off but then i had to get my wire cutters finally it came off but then there was something on the back of it and I was like, oh, great, that's awesome. I wanted to sit flush with the sign. Well, that doesn't happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this to the windmill, the little circle. That ends up falling off later. Don't worry, i show you how to fix it. Then, <laughs> now we're gonna take our drill because I am adamant about this sitting flush with the sign and not like hot gluing it on. So I take my drill, I'm gonna drill a hole into our sign, just trying to find placement here. And then I will put it up on something here. There you go. Drill a hole in there and the little like thing that was on the back fit perfectly inside. We will put hot glue on that later because it ends up falling out. <laughs> I'm a mess. All right, taking the plaster, we're just gonna distress this board. I'm starting from the outside, working my way in, just using the stencil brush from Dollar Tree. Then I'll take a little bit more and put it through the middle. Then I grab a decal, I make this with my Cricut and it says Country Living. I'm using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. And I will take that same stencil brush, just the Dollar Tree one, and I'm gonna kind of 
pounce it in here. I wanted it to look more like faded paint, not so bold and clean. So that's why I chose to kind of like pounce, 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 because I didn't want every inch of the letters to be covered. I do make sure that I get, you know, the really good parts of the letters so you know what letter it is, but it ends up coming out so darn clean. I, I absolutely love it. And you guys can make this your own. It doesn't have to say country living. It could say home. It could say love. It could say fresh air or spring, anything. So we go ahead and peel this off. Look at those clean lines. Ooh, oh girl. Yes, I love me some clean lines. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and cover the back, but I take the, the hanger that was on it. I hot glue it on there, utilizing the little plastic parts. So I take my shipment paper, cover it up. Y'all know I do this. I don't want to see the back of the, the other sign. So then I flip it over. And then, then the sign comes out, but then the circle falls off. And I'm like, oh girl, you a, you're a mess. So I apply super glue to it, then hot glue. And then I'll put the hot glue in the hole of this. Make sure to stick it in there. And look at how cute this is. Sometimes you don't have to overdo it, you know, says the girl that's extra. <laughs> but I do love the simplicity of this. I love that it looks totally like a wood sign. Nobody would know you piece those together with paint sticks. Okay, so our next DIY, I am taking three of these signs from Dollar Tree. They easily, the the actual sign part comes pops out so easily. Well, then we gotta take the sawtooth hangers out. These come out easy as well. But you guys, you have to look out for these because they are covered in glue. So I have to take my sanding block. I'm trying to just like even all of the glue out so it's not so bumpy. Now we're going to go in after we're done with that. And we're going to try to take these words off, which are like next to impossible, even with the heat gun. I was able to save the thankful, but the this is us, I just ended up having to tear those up because they were just so difficult for me to get up. So we're going to go in with elephant gray. Yo, this took me an hour to do. My mind was at like zero. I tell you, there is probably a way easier way to do this, but I literally, it took an hour. So we're going to... Uh, do two coats on each of those, all of those frames. Make sure to get the inside. Then we're going to paint the backs of these with elephant gray as well. And we're going to do the same with all three of them. Now I'm taking some vinyl cutouts, our stencils that I made with my Cricut. Let me know if you guys want me to put these in my Etsy shop. Uh, with these, I'm using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. And I am using, so one says life is better on the farm. One is going to say farm, sweet farm. Now y'all make sure this is just inspiration. If you guys aren't farmhouse, don't, you don't have to do farmhouse. These are here, like the bones of this, the signs and everything like that. That is the inspiration. And you can do whatever designs you want on this. You can make it fit your decor. And I think that's the most important thing everybody has to remember is, Yes, I do farmhouse because that's my home style, but that doesn't mean that like these cannot be transitioned into other styles. All right, so after we're done placing this on here, we're gonna go ahead and start stenciling again with the plaster. All right, so I'm gonna do the pouncing again because I don't want this like super bold or anything. I'm just dab, 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 you know? I love that movie, like the one with the real people. I love it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this one and then the farm sweet farm one. So let's go over. Now for this one, I'm painting over the vinyl letters. That way when we go ahead and weed this and peel back the letters, we're going to see the gray lettering on here. So this dries super fast. I'm going to go ahead and weed this. I know some of you like love watching the weeding process, but I'm sorry. I do fast forward <laughs> through this here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and weed this out. This came out so good. My inspiration was actually, um, it was like some ad for Wayfair and it had this thing. It was much a larger scale, of course. So that's where I got the inspiration from. So 
we're going to go ahead and weed and then sorry, I do jump ahead to our next one where we actually weed the letters out and you can see how clean that looks. It just stands out so very much. And we're going to finish weeding this. You guys are more than welcome to put clear on it, spray it, put Mod Podge over it, clear wax. That is up to you. I didn't put anything over it. Sorry. All right. Now taking that plaster, I'm just distressing the edges. I just thought it looked too clean. You know, I don't know. But it's okay because you hardly see it once it's in the frame. Now we are going to cover the backs. Y'all know I have to do this. I don't even know why I put it in my videos anymore because you probably already know what's going to happen. But I'm just hot gluing on the back, pressing them on our shipment paper, and then we're going to just get our Arteza craft knife and then clean this up just like this. Now our backs are nice and clean. Nobody will see all the trash on the back. So we're going to go ahead and pop these into our frames. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. Put those down you guys know how to do that so i won't show you that i did it on all three very nice okay so i decided to stick all three of them together you obviously do not have to do that i used super glue and hot glue here do you guys see how cute this is this is so adorable and it looks so clean nobody would know these were dollar tree frames like come on Woo! okay so then I take the plaster again. We're going to distress around the frame, go down the middle. And oh gosh, this came together so well. Imagine this on a grander scale. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn that around. We're going to take one of the sawtooth hangers we used earlier. And as I'm doing this, I accidentally cracked the frame. And I tell my husband, it's okay. Nothing hot glue can fix. And he's like, oh my gosh, no, you're not. And I'm like, yes, I am. But y'all, look at how cute this turned out and i spent three dollars you know of course like my vinyl and stuff like that hey again sorry to interrupt you while well, you are full on into these diys but you guys i hope you enjoy this mega video i have come a long way since the beginning of my youtube channel so i knew that i wanted to get my newest compilation of all of my farmhouse diys and put them together for you because if you're anything like me I put on makeup videos while I'm crafting, while I'm cleaning the house, while I'm cooking. I just love the background. I love watching. I love being able to see all of my favorite DIYs from a YouTuber in one place. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and comment down below. I always, always love reading your comments. And with that said, we will get back into today's video. Her channel for that. All right, you guys, cheers to sour belts. All right, for our last DIY, I'm taking this galvanized sign from Dollar Tree. I got it during the summer. And you can put a wet cloth over this. It's just paper, and it'll probably come off super easy for you. I just wanted to go the difficult route. That's all right. Don't, don't mind me. All right, so taking this cow, I got this from Walmart. I think it's like $1.97 or something. And I'm just staining it with that carbon gray just to tie it. You guys know I have to tie everything into each other. And next I'm gonna grab the burlap garland. Now that's what it's called on the tag. I got this from Dollar Tree during the summer. We're gonna cut this off. And then I'm going to pull three strands out from the sides and then the top and the bottom here okay see that it gives it a nice like rustic distress look to attach this we are going to get hot glue and super glue now attach the super glue first then dab your hot glue on here because if you all know metal and hot glue they don't like each other they ain't friends uh but we try and make them friends by mixing them with super glue so as you'll see next, I get like the super glue, do a strand, do some hot glue, and then I'm just dabbing, just running it over so it doesn't all come through. Then taking our cow, we get the hot glue, super glue, attach that little baby. Now using some Dollar Tree wood letters. Y'all, these are so hard to find. When you find them, pick a bunch of them up because there is only one letter in each pack, okay? So taking that carbon gray, I am staining those letters on up, easy peasy, and then taking the same thing we've been using, we're gonna take that super glue and the hot glue. You guys, you can do farm on this, you could do love, you could do hope, I mean, whatever you want, cows, I don't know. 
but we're just taking the super glue and the hot glue on this attaching it and I actually was pretty impressed with the way this ends up turning out so I hope you guys like it after that we are going to grab some of our extras I tell you guys to keep everything everything you take off so I found one of my twine pieces that have the plastic attached to it, it worked so well then taking some scrap box wood I kind of cut a little bit off just so it's a little thinner I'm gonna take hot glue which I wish I would have remembered to attach some super glue in there just 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 for added security here, okay? So we're gonna do that on each side. And then that gap, sorry I'm not in frame in this, but I just take the twine from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna wrap it around three fingers and make it pretty thick. And then I take a um, piece of twine, tie it off in the middle. And next we are going to just cut those loops in half, kind of like, you know, like kind of like a messy bow here. Attach that with, I only put hot glue. Make sure you put super glue too, because that could fall off, who knows. Now taking some buttons. I found the most perfect button. It's like a brown distress and it has like text on it. I'll do a close up after this, but y'all, it's perfection. So I hot glue that on and we're done with this. So this is how it turned out. Sorry about the lighting, it's like super bright. But it's super basic and cute and I absolutely love how this turned out. This would make a great gift for somebody that lives like on a farm or a housewarming. I don't know. Let me know which one was your favorite down below as usual. Oh, I love all of these. What are you doing, bud? I got the new one. Are you trying to be a creeper and look over the neighbor's gates? Okay, so for this one, we're gonna take four of these wood grain frames from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna completely take them apart. So you're gonna take the back out, the glass out, all of that stuff. Uh, these actually have like a wood grain texture on them, which is absolutely amazing. Now I'm taking a sponge. I'm brushing on the white chalk paint. I actually saw, um, it's a channel called uh, Four Quarters crafts. I'm going to link her channel down in the description box. She is amazing. And she did this technique with a textured ball. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is genius. Why have I never thought to do that? Instead of like distressing it, you know, like with a paintbrush, this just highlights all of those beautiful grain textures without all of the brush strokes. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at this. So I did this with all four of my picture frames here. These are just the four by six frames. I, no, five by seven, I'll say. And I made sure to get all of the sides to them as well. Now that we have all of them painted, I'm going to take out the little, I say rivets, I don't know what they're called, prongs. And these, if you just pull like outwards, they come out super easy. And I just did this with my pliers here. After we're done with that, we're gonna connect these together. Now make sure you play around with them because some of them were like a little bowed in some sections. Here I'm taking Dollar Tree Super Glue and you'll see that I alternate it. So I put like super glue and then in between the super glue, I put the hot glue. For those of you that are new to crafting, we do super glue for the longevity and um, hot glue for the immediate hold. Now that we put those two together, we're gonna connect all of them together. I know, I know, you guys have probably seen the window pane thing like a million times, but this was really about just the process of like highlighting the wood grain here. So after that's all dry, we are going to take, you guys, do you see these little corner pieces? I got them off a table, I don't know how long ago, over six years ago, and I don't know why they came to my mind and how in the world I found them in my basement, but I did, and the detail they add is everything. So now I'm going to take, like, it's a white crate. I actually found this at a garage sale this past summer for 25 cents, and I am gonna attach it to the bottom, and that is it, y'all. That is it. 
look at how gorgeous this is. If you cannot hear the smile, I'm smiling. I just think this, if this was so, so easy and I love that it stands up. So no hanging involved. You could put this in a bathroom, in a kitchen, on a shelf, like possibilities here, y'all. I love All right, you guys, Skillshare. What is Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community with over thousands of classes, such as marketing, they have stuff for music, fine art, web development, crafts. And for me right now, I am taking an interior design basics class by Lauren Cox because y'all know I just moved into my new home and I could definitely learn a thing or two about the setup. So I love this because you can do it at your own pace. The class that I'm currently taking is about an hour and 45 minutes and I like that I can break it up into, you know, watching it in my morning coffee or at my lunch break or whatever it may be and you know with an annual membership of only ten dollars a month it is so worth it to educate yourself and to learn something new especially when we're all at home a little more often right now it's definitely worth it so the first thousand people to click the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership so make sure to go down in my description box and click that link Next DIY is also easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. So I'm taking two of the eight by 10 framed canvases here and we are going to take them apart. So I am just gonna get my craft knife by Arteza. I love these craft knives, they are super sharp. I will leave a link for you down in the description box. And what I'm doing here is just cutting around all of the staples so we can get the bulk of our canvas off. There you go, now we got a wood frame. I saved the canvas because we could always use that later. I always save everything I take off. And we're gonna do the same thing for this frame. Now don't worry about the staples. Those can stay right where they're at. You won't see them at all. After we're done removing all of the canvases, I am going to take a sanding block because these things are rough and we are gonna sand it down as much as we can. Now I am taking Apple Barrel Black acrylic paint, some water, and I just created a stain with it. And let me tell you, this turns out so gorgeous. I love using the water stain because it dries faster than an oil-based stain that I use on like my wood signs and stuff. And yeah. Okay. So now we are taking a Dollar Tree sign. I am tracing it out with our wooden frame. And now I'm taking my craft knife again, and I'm going to score this over and over and over. I'm not going to put you through the torture because I was here for like a good, a good minute. Okay. Um, but basically I'm going to cut this out on the top and the side, and this is going to make the back to our sign. Now I got this frame idea from Chrissy creates DIY. So make sure to check her out. I do not know why I never thought to frame things like this before. Cause it looks so high end. I am taking my chalk paint, giving it a messy look. Y'all know I, I, this is my vibe. Now taking the back, we want to cover it. So doing my usual, I get the hot glue put it on that shipping paper. We're gonna clean it up with our craft knife. And now instead of that ugly, ripped up spring backing, we are going to have a nice clean back. Okay, so here's our frame. I have my wood glue and my hot glue. And I'm going to put the back of the sign we just cut out and painted on it. Now, the frames aren't going to match up exactly because they are like kind of a different size. Here I'm just measuring for our decal. I will have this available in my Etsy shop. I made it on my Cricut with permanent matte vinyl. And so before I put the second frame on, I am gonna put my vinyl in there. And y'all pay attention to the wood grain because look at that on the left. Oh my gosh, that wood grain is beautiful. So I made sure that that was the one that was gonna go on top here. So it looks beautiful just like this and this could be a frame sign, beautiful. Um, now I'm distressing my vinyl with my um, sanding block. I think it was Liz Moore decal and decor that I got that from, but I'm not 100% positive. Now I'm taking wood glue again, little bit of hot glue, and now I'm just gonna put an added frame on there. And this is just gonna give it a little bit more bulk and depth. You could have totally just used one and been good with it, but I love the way this looks. Like 
It looks high-end. It looks like you would have bought this at a store. Look at that beautiful wood grain. I absolutely love this. And it was easy. And I feel like all of the DIYs on today's video are gonna be really easy. So all right, for this one, we are taking two of these signs. You can find these so often at Dollar Tree. Some of them pop out really easy, like that one. This one, on the other hand, took some work. So if you have this happen, just get your craft knife, go through the back, it loosens up the glue, and then it pops out a lot more easily. Now, there's tons of glue on the frame right here. So take your craft knife and scrape it off. And the reason I'm gonna scrape this off is one, we're gonna use one towards the top um, of our lantern. And then the second one we wanna clean up because we're gonna put the backing back on and we want it to sit perfectly flush with our frame so we don't have a lopsided wonky donkey lantern here. All right, so now on the backing, I tore the top off. Then I'm covering my bag. I know it was just going to be sitting on the ground, but there is, I, I just can't leave it like that. Like I have to, somebody's going to pick that thing up. I don't know. All right. Now taking acrylic paint. Yes, you guys, more acrylic paint. I don't know what came over me. I'm not using chalk paint as we were saying, but we are going to paint the front, the back, the inside, all of the frames. You're going to paint both of them all black. After you're done with that, we're gonna put our backing back in. So I just lay some hot glue in the frame. This is my detailed gun so that it's not messy. All right, now I was like, oh, the brown looks fine. Nah, I had to paint it. So I paint the inside of this all black. Now, we're gonna take 16 of the smaller paint stir sticks here. I'm taking acrylic paint and the water again for our stain. And I am going to lay these all out. Just, just get them all out there so you have them ready to go. Now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna hit all of these with this water stain. And make sure to get your sides. Make sure to get the top and the bottom. You want to get all of these. Now after you're done with all of this, these, um, one side, then you're gonna flip them over. It's perfectly okay if they're still wet. It's not going to ruin them at all. And I do get my heat gun to speed up the drying process. This is water, so they dry super quick. All right, now we're getting our frames and we're gonna start with one stick just so we don't have the wobbles going on. So I'm going to take a hit of hot glue on the ends. There we go. Make sure they're nice and flush with the bottom especially. Look at how beautiful that wood grain looks. Okay, now I'm gonna stack the rest on, play around with the placement. Grabbing a pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and mark where those stir sticks are so I know where to lay them down after putting hot glue on them. So as you can see, I put the hot glue on the top and the bottom. I use my bottom finger to help make sure that it's flush with the bottom because like I said, you don't want it wonky when you go set it down on a surface. All right, so we're gonna turn it around and then I kind of get smarter as I'm I'm doing it, you know? So I'm gonna glue, do you see how I was like, why isn't this fitting? But you just gotta kind of pull them apart as you're gluing them and then they're fine, there you go. All right, so like I said, getting smarter. So I do the sides first and then I go in with the middles and then I um, mark them off with our pencil like we did before. Oh, look at that. I'm you guys know I love like wood and all that stuff so like seeing the grain and how beautiful this like water stain turned out is everything okay so on this side I layer the paint sticks on top of each other did you, did you see that that's I want to show you see I'm like layering it on top of it instead of like in line with the frame I hope that makes sense so you guys we are gonna put the rest of them on there we go, we got the rest on. Now I'm taking the thicker nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm just sizing it up right here, seeing how long I want it on the top. After that, I am going to take two strands of the nautical rope here and then I'm going to take some of this other jute cord or I don't know what it is, but it's in my Amazon store link in my description box and I'm gonna wrap this thinner one around three times tack it off in the back, cut the remaining uh, remainder of it off here. And then I keep going like back to just reference how long I want it and where it's gonna sit. See, there we go. 
how high we want it. Okay, so now I'm taking my detail glue gun and we're gonna glue these together. And I wanted to do that one for a thicker handle and two, I didn't want once it was on for the nautical rope to kind of like spread. You know what I'm saying? So I thought connecting them would be really pretty. It would add, you know, I like the, the depth of it because it's thicker. All right, so we're gonna finish this up. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna get that thinner jute cord and we are gonna wrap it around three times. So I hot glue first, put that jute cord on, and then we will wrap it around three times here. One, two, three. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, so now after we done, we cut the, the excess of that off, I'm gonna fold this in half so that we can make sure that everything lines up see that all right we want those to match and then i go ahead and i unravel the ends here i just i thought it was pretty i don't know all right so now we just need to attach it just hot glue there we go there was kind of a gap right there so i just got my glue gun and kind of filled it in there and then i attached the opposite side and we're done y'all that was it and look at how stunning this looks and how simple it was this cost under five dollars and y'all i got the big giant paint sticks too and i want to do like a medium and a large and then this will be the small one and stagger them on my porch i hope you guys like these easy diys today i am really excited about all of them okay so a blanket ladder oh yeah yeah sorry you guys for this entire video going forward okay so I'm taking six Dollar Tree plungers. I am taking three spindles that I got off Facebook Marketplace. Got a bunch of them for like five bucks. And uh, here we go. So we are gonna take all of these. There's Tinkerbell. And we are gonna start taking all of the tops off. I take the stickers off with my heat gun and I do have to get my sanding block and sand all of the adhesive off because those things were sticky. Now we're going to go out to the garage and I am going to cut the um, ends of our plungers off and the tops except one set. So two of them don't cut the top off because that'll be the top of your quote unquote blanket ladder because I don't put blankets on it. Okay, so now I'm just connecting the um, plungers. I'm just, I don't know, sticks with um, wood glue and hot glue. So I just put like a, I, I use the wood glue, put it around the edges, and then I put the hot glue in the middle. So you can kind of see it. I'm so sorry for this shoddy footage. Like it is so not great, but I hope you grasp the idea. Okay, there's Hank slobbering. So then I realized, you know what? You have that star bomb. This is actually like a crack filler. And what it is is like a super glue and it has this accelerator. So right when you put it on, it literally dries instantaneously. So I thought this would be great for added security because there was a little gap in there. So we do that and I do it for both sides, obviously. Then taking Min Wax True Black Stain. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see it is black, like it is gorgeous. So I'm gonna stain the this side and obviously the other side. And I chose to go with black because hashtag obby, the spindles are black, ding, 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 ding. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and finish that and then this is where it gets sketchy. So I place the spindles, I mark off where they are and then I'm gonna pre-drill holes into the, um, what do you call it? The plungers themselves. And then I am also going to, so mine was like eight inches, 22 inches and 37 inches. That's where I decided to place my spindles here. And I'm just taking it down the row. I'm pre-drilling the three holes that we're going to need. And this is just gonna help the screw go in a lot more smoothly because even with them pre-drilled, it was giving me a tough time. So as you can see, I have my screw in there and then I am drilling, pre-drilling a hole in my spindle as well. Sorry, I'm not in frame for hardly any of this. Okay, so I'm going to drill in my screw a little bit more 
enough so that I can go ahead and attach my spindle and screw it on and then I can kind of finish it off. Okay, there we go. Then going down to the third one, don't know why I did that. I did the same thing, put the screw in, then screwed my spindle, then I go ahead and finish it off by tightening it up. Now you guys can find spindles on Facebook Marketplace, Habitat by Humanity. You could even buy an old chair and cut the spindles off. So lots of options. So this is the opposite side. The first spindle was easy, but as you go down, obviously it's gonna tighten up on you. So for the second spindle, I was like, oh crap, I can't see the, the hole in the spindle to like line it up. So then I just started going rogue. This whole thing was rogue, you guys. I eyeballed everything. I had no idea in my mind what the heck I was doing here. I just hope you guys get inspired and say like, oh, okay, I, I kind of get what she was doing. Like that's that's where this this DIY went. <laughs> so taking some chalk paint, um, this is Linen White by Rust-Oleum. Gonna go ahead and take my two inch chip brush, distress this down. No rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. I am just making sure to get um, everything covered so there aren't like getting stark black um, pieces left here. And yeah, I, I'm i sorry. I don't think I'll ever film on the floor ever again because I just, I don't know, you guys. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this. I didn't know I was going to take you through the entire um, painting process of this, but you're welcome hopefully it's very relaxing for you okay so once this dries I go ahead and I hit the back of it and after this we are gonna grab some Dollar Tree twine and we need to cover where we uh, attached our plungers so I made these three inches long and we're obviously gonna put four of them for the four places we attach the plungers and that is it, you guys. Like, it was really, I mean, in theory, this was super easy. I made it super hard on myself. And uh, I think, you know, this was like the end of the day where you're like, oh, girlfriend, you need to go to bed. You need to go to bed or you need a margarita. One, one or the other. I don't know. So I'm going to finish doing this on all the other sides. And this is how the bla blanket hashtag I don't know uh this is how my ladder turned out I think it is beautiful I cannot wait to just find a place for it in my home you can put books in here blankets on here towels on here if you want it in the kitchen you guys thank you for being here with me today like you're not even looking out into the neighbor's yard. You're just being a stage five creeper queen bear, aren't you? Aren't you? You're gonna look at your day handsome now. Oh, oh. All right, our first DIY is inspired by Creations by Favi. I saw this DIY Dollar Tree toolbox and knew I had to at least attempt to recreate it. So you guys, we are gonna start off with these signs from Dollar Tree and I already sanded them down. I'm going to paint all of them front and back in chalk paint. I did three coats on the printed side and one, or sorry, and two coats on the brown sides. So you're gonna have four signs in total, two of each here. And then of course, I'm going to take my mini, uh, plaid chip brush. I'm going to dip that into some antique wax and I am going to distress this down just a little bit. You can totally leave it stark white. You can paint it whatever color you want. This is just for inspiration. So I'm going to do all four of them like this and I do the fronts and I do the backs of them. So once we're done with that, we need to build our base. So I took the larger paint stir sticks and I sized them up against the side of what's gonna be our toolbox. And I went ahead and marked that out. Then I'm gonna grab my table saw. I do have this linked in my Amazon store link down in the description box. And I am just gonna cut all of these. Um, yeah, 
I'm gonna cut all of these sticks the same length. And then I did take a sanding block to the ends of them. Now taking a uh, what is it, baby wipe and some antique wax, I'm gonna go ahead and stain those. You could do front, back, you could just do the front, it doesn't matter, but I knew I needed to stain them. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up staining them, let those babies dry, and now we're going to attach them. So I am using some um, gel super glue and hot glue. Now, I'm using rulers to make sure that all of these are completely straight. Now, when I measured these, they fit the sign perfectly. But you know how when you use super, not super glue, hot glue, it adds a little bit in between whatever you're doing. Do you, you guys get what I'm saying? So it actually widened my base just a little bit. And at first I was so frustrated, but I work around it and I'll show you how. So we're gonna finish attaching all of our paint sticks here. Now taking the side first, make sure your image is inside your box. I'm gonna hot glue that. I put a healthy, healthy strand of hot glue on there, held it up. It actually held very, very nicely on its own. Then I attached the second side box here. Voila, so easy. Um, and then we are going to attach the ends the same way, just attach, putting hot glue on the ends. And then as you can see, I used some Jenga blocks um, and that was just for added security, extra holds. I put them on the end as well. Now, Fabi actually uses a Dollar Tree sign for the base as well. So make sure you check out her video. All right, of course the wooden dowel I chose to use was too big, so I had to drill holes, so keep that in mind depending on what size dowel you're using. All right, so now these are the jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I am cutting them to size, and then I am gonna do this for eight. So you're gonna need eight of these. So all I did was measure it up against our side, and this is what is going to help hide that gap on our corners. So I stained all of them, and then I was like, girl, hello, let's just stain the dowel while you're at it. So I um, put the dowel in the holes, and I'm gonna go ahead and just mark off where I want it cut. I'm gonna use my table saw again to cut that down, and then I'm just going to do the same exact thing, baby wipe, antique wax, and then I was like, you know what, I want some like little in caps basically for my uh, dowel. So I got my sliced wood beads, I got two of them, stained them, and then that's gonna add just a little bit more detail to our, uh, I don't even know if this would be considered a toolbox. Anyways, so now I'm just grabbing some wooded dowels and we're just gonna put those in the corners. That's just for added security on the corners, just to give it a little bit more support. And I do that for all four corners here. All right. So now, taking your popsicle sticks, you're gonna put one on the side, and what you're gonna do is put it just a little bit over where um, the gap is, and you're gonna see right here how we cover the gap is we're gonna get that other popsicle stick, um, our craft stick, whatever they're called, and we're gonna butt it up to the one that's right there, and then you're not going to see any gaps on the side at all. So I'm gonna repeat that step for all Four of them. Look at how clean that looks for the other three. And let's go ahead. I'm going to jump ahead right now. There we go. All done. Now I'm going to put the um, dowel in there. I'm going to hot glue those sliced beads on the ends. And y'all, I decided to keep this super simple. Um, Creations by Fabi, she put a really cute farmhouse uh, stencil on them and it looked adorable but I wanted to be able to transition this anywhere in the house so I didn't want to put anything on it and look at how big this is in high end this ended up being about 20 inches long you can totally carry it by the handle and it just looks so high end and I couldn't have done this without Creations by Fabi's inspiration. So definitely check out her link down in the description box. I'm gonna leave All her right. Chat. My next inspiration comes from Christy Creates DIY. And this was actually what started like my entire video was this piece. I thought it was absolutely genius and needed, needed to recreate it. So I'm gonna show you my take on hers. 
So we're gonna take three eight by 10 canvases. These are from Dollar Tree. And all I'm doing is taking my craft knife, cutting around the staples, and then ripping off the canvases. So I do have to tell you guys, if it is hard for you to find these at Dollar Tree, go to Hobby Lobby. They have a 10 pack for $12.99. So only $1.20 each and they are way better quality. All right, so now we're taking our jumbo craft sticks again. I'm gonna line those up. Then I'm gonna take my pencil, mark off where I need to cut, and then I'm gonna take my scissors and we are gonna cut all of these jumbo craft sticks. I like grit my teeth when I cut these. I'm like, oh, this is so hard, it hurts my hands. But you know what, I do it anyways because you know, I'm a craftaholic, why not? I'll do anything for a good craft. Okay, so then I'm taking antique wax, a brush, isn't it weird how sometimes, like, why didn't I use the baby wipe on this one? Oh, that's why, because this is burnt umber acrylic paint. Yeah, that's that's why, girlfriend. Okay, so I covered those, and then for our frames, these were really rough, which was totally fine with me. So I paint the insides, the outsides, just paint the entire frame because, y'all, these are so uneven that they kind of have gaps, and you could see all, it, it was just weird. But uh, when you think of a like hen's nest or uh, what am I trying to think of? You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's weathered. It's outside. It doesn't look new. So I really liked that the wood was really distressed and roughed on these. So I was all for it. Okay, now taking our jumbo craft sticks, we are going to start hot gluing these to the back. I just put some hot glue on the top. And the bottom, oh, I think I was thinking of chicken coop. I think that's what I was thinking of, duh. Hashtag us, I mean. Okay, so we're gonna continue these. And then as I'm doing this, somehow it ended up not fitting, but only by like a little bit. So I just take my scissors and it literally cuts like the perfect little strip of wood. It couldn't have worked out more perfectly. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set that aside, or are we? No, I have to paint the back. Y'all, I always tell myself like, oh, you don't need to do the back, and then I have to end up doing the back. I just can't leave it. So I'm just doing a rough paint job. It's supposed to look distressed anyway, so it doesn't need to be pretty, okay? All right, so now taking some wood glue and some hot glue, I'm gonna attach the second frame. So this frame is gonna be our middle piece here, okay? All right. Easy peasy, right? Then taking some white, I didn't like how brown it was, so I needed to add something to the back. All right, I tried stencils, didn't work. Needless to say, we're gonna use some vinyl later. All right, so now I'm taking some raffia and I'm kind of pulling, first I'm gonna cut it, then I pull it apart to give me some like skinnier pieces because it was just too thick, too chunky. I didn't like it. So. We do that and I'm doing this first before making my vinyl decal because I want to know like how far up the raffia is gonna go. So you can see I'm pushing it down and then I'm gonna get my ruler. Okay, we go make it. I got this design from Cricut's Design Space and there we go, farm fresh eggs. Voila, very easy. I love the paneled looking background. All right, now let's add our accessories. Let's accessorize her. Okay, so there is our raffia. Now these eggs, y'all, I got these at Hobby Lobby for $1.99 and they weren't on sale. Don't judge me, I really wanted them. And they were just the perfect color. Now, keep in mind, you guys, uh, Christie's has the actual size eggs from like Dollar Tree, like real size eggs. So she has to use four canvases for her. So keep that in mind if you wanna use larger eggs. Um, these are much, much smaller than those eggs. So I only had to use three frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I believe just one more egg. Look at how perfect these color eggs are. Like, ah, uh, they're everything. Okay, so after we're done with that, you guys, what was genius was she got these rug grippers, okay? And we're gonna use this as chicken wire. So all I do is take my craft knife, a frame, measure it out, cut it out. Then I take Hammered by Rust-Oleum and spray paint mine. Well, let me tell y'all, this is so sticky, like sticky, icky, icky, okay? And it didn't help that I put spray paint over it. Um, she used chalk paint on hers, so I don't know if that's any difference, but 
you're gonna hot glue this all the way around, but just make sure you're pulling on that, um, on that gripper because you want this to be tight. You don't want it to be sagging down into your frame. I'm just cutting the excess off here with my Cricut scissors. I'm gonna do another strand on the bottom just to show you. We need to be hot gluing. You need to be pulling it tight and you're gonna follow this all the way around. And you could already see that it looks like chicken wire. And look, go watch Christy's video because she did something different with her chicken wire. So to find out what she did, make sure to go watch. And you guys, we put our last frame on and then I am going to get some more light chalk paint. Kind of distress the edges. At first I thought I was gonna use crackle medium, but the frames were so rough that putting this white paint already made it look like chipped paint that it's been out on the farm for a long time. And I love it and I am so happy that Chrissy came up with this because I think a lot of people will really appreciate it and I, I absolutely love it. So of course I have to finish the back, right, right, okay. So this is what it looks like, Farm Fresh Eggs. I think it just looks so dang good, like organic, like it just came from outside. I love this. Thank you, Chrissy Creates DIY for doing this and inspiring me. Disappointed. All right, my next one is from Chalk It Up Fancy, and they're actually really big on Facebook, and I saw this and was like, oh, this is so gorgeous. I need to try and make it. So I am taking a Christmas tag sign from Dollar Tree, Keep in mind the Christmas tags are a lot smaller than the Valentine's Day tags that they put out. So I am just going to take plaster, gotta rub my petroleum jelly because it literally took me like two minutes to try and get the lid off. All right, now I'm just spritzing that with water to make it move a little bit more easily. I'm gonna coat this, how many times? One time, two times, don't know, one time. One time, hit me baby, one more time. Okay, and then, so, I think it was the Distress Princess DIY that I got this from. And I didn't have a tea towel, that's what Chalk It Up Fancy uses. I didn't have a tea towel, and I didn't want to cut an image out of paper. So, um, the DIY uh, Distress Princess, she prints an image on to tissue paper. And I was like, that is genius. I'm gonna do that. So I designed this in Canva. I will have a free link for you down in the description box to print that yourself. And I am taking the tissue paper, Mod Podge, and then patting it down. If it has wrinkles, the more wrinkles, the better, y'all. Like, it's just gonna make it look so much more distressed and awesome. So as you can see, the tissue paper doesn't go all the way up. So I am just going to, sorry about my forehead. I, I need to work on the angles, okay? So um, I'm just going to grab another piece of tissue paper and don't worry because like the lines don't show or anything, it blends right in. So I put some more tissue paper on. Look at how seamless it looks, you guys. It looked so good. I'm gonna be using this tissue paper hack like on everything, I swear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge over the entire thing once the tissue paper dries. Now, yeah, girl, cut that off. Don't make your life hard. Now take it a standing block, go in downward motions, get all that excess off. Now I am just taking antique wax and I am patting the sides. So I'm not distressing it. I'm not like doing brush strokes. I am just kind of patting this stencil brush onto our tag sign to give it a more rusted look to it. And then I also kind of go inside the sign. You guys, look at that image. It looks so good. And can you believe that's like, it looks like it was printed on to the sign. Like that does not look like tissue paper. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love it. Okay, so after you're done, resting this out or doing whatever you want to do to it we are going to take this welcome and at first i painted the welcome as well because i thought i was going to use it but i go ahead this is rich black by folk art chalk paint and again i am just like stippling this on there just kind of pouncing it on the more tin that shows through the better. I just wasn't filling the uh, like teal color, the minty color that was on there. So I decided to cover the entire thing up. 
Then I decided I don't want the welcome. So I get my wire cutters and I'm using my muscles here. All right, like that thing was hard. And it had two little pieces from the stand that didn't want to come off, like not at all. So I cut it down as far as I could. And then with the little pieces that were left on there, I was able to like fit them through the hole on the sign, kind of complicated, but I was able to fit them in there. And then I just had to like douse it with hot glue, like douse it, you know, like make it rain on that sign with hot glue. Then I just put a popsicle stick up top just to make sure that it doesn't come out. Now I'm taking a piece of twine and this is going to be our hanger. So put that on both sides. Then I take another popsicle stick just for added security because the windmill adds a little bit of weight here. And of course, we're going to cover the back. Who do you think I am? And I cut it out. Voila. I hot glue it on. And now you don't have to see that janky back piece. No, you don't. And look at how gorgeous our sign turned out. Look at this. Chalk it up fancy. Thank you so much for the inspiration. I love the way this came out. I really love that you can get inspiration from people's creations and make them your very own. That is what is so amazing about crafting. Okay, so this is Four Quarters Crafts. This is Melissa's. Y'all, I got a craft crush on that woman. I, I tell you, I have been binge watching her stuff. You need to go to her channel. All right. So we're taking these pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take them outside and we are going to sand them out and cut them. But before we need to measure it out. So I am going to cut these into two and a half inch blocks. There will be a little excess off of the side and we're gonna cut that off, all right? So let's go in the garage, let's come back. Bam, there she is. Okay, so then I'm going to clean these off with some baby wipes. Uh, they sand it off pretty well. Then taking that rich black, I am taking these wood letters from Dollar Tree. They fit absolutely perfect. And I'm gonna paint those black. We're gonna paint our wood piece entirely black, black the top, the bottom, the sides, everything. Just paint it all black here, okay? So then after we're done painting all of these pieces black, we are going to flip our parchment paper around, take our blocks. Now, I did two coats of white on this side, the brown side, and then I coated the rest of it with one coat of white. And I know the other side was white, but it had a glossy finish, wasn't digging it, so I decided to paint over that as well. So once that is all dry, we are gonna get our wooden letters. Now, Melissa uses, I forget, they're like almost like tile looking pieces she got from Dollar Tree and she uses the black stickers from Dollar Tree. So make sure to watch her video to see her take on this. So I'm just using my detail gun. I am trying to get them as centered as possible. And oh my gosh, I just love the way this turned out. And it looks so high end because of these the wood signs from Dollar Tree, like they're so heavy. I love it. And you can make this reversible too. I just didn't have enough time to be honest. Okay, so now I'm taking antique wax and I wanted to add a little dimension. So I decided to distress around the sides. And of course, you don't have to do that at all. You can leave it vibrant just like this, but I really wanted to tie this into all my other DIYs and I really thought it made the letters pop. So after we are done with that, you guys are done. If you wanna make it reversible, possibilities are endless. But look at how beautiful this came out. So thank you, Melissa, from Four Quarters Crafts because I really enjoyed making it. It was so easy to make. And y'all, thank you so much for being here with me. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the sign here. And I am taking this sisal rope. Now this is from hardware stores. It has definitely a different texture than like the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And it's a lot stiffer. So it, it works a little differently. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start at a corner up at the top with our hot glue. You do have to hold this rope down a little longer. I chose to use this one, this rope, because of the light color. 
I'm gonna wrap this around. You do have to hold this down, like I said, a little longer than like nautical rope. And as you're coming around the corners, hold that down for like 30 seconds or it's just gonna pop up at you. So you guys, we're just gonna keep wrapping this around at least four times. I'm just gonna jump right to the ends. Didn't think you wanted to watch me do that over and over and over again. So I cut the ends off, just putting a little bit more hot glue on the ends, just, it doesn't really unravel, but you know, better safe than sorry. Then I took it outside, spray painted it. I wasn't looking for a full coverage. <laughs> then taking this mineral chalk paint, I like tried to distress it down, but it wasn't showing up. And I was like, okay, that was a sign saying like, stop, you're done. You're done with this tray, okay? So after I'm done with that, I take these like, beads they're from one of those like brain games at dollar tree one of my beautiful subscribers sent them to me so thank you and then doing it the lazy way i just put these on the end of a paint stick or a paint brush <laughs> paint them dry them we're gonna do the same thing for the other three i only do one coat of these now i am attaching them to the bottom of my tray i'm gonna use a um a little bit of super glue in the middle then hot glue around it. And I am going to do the same thing for all of them. Try to make sure you could like line them up as best as you can. And that is it for our tray. So now using those containers that we got in these, I took the, I don't know, what are these orange slices? And I'm gonna take the sticker part off of them. Did have to use my heat gun to get them off. We're gonna paint those with one coat of white chalk paint. We're gonna do that for all three of these here. I did make some decals on my Cricut machine, but you could use rub-on transfers or stickers. And I did blooms and bulbs. I thought it was cute. Thought it was a little different than like farm fresh, you know, farm fresh flowers. That's what I was going to say. So I'm gonna to continue to do the last one. After that, I'm going to take that mineral chalk paint again. I mixed it with my white paintbrush and I'm just giving it a little bit more detail so it's not stark white. Okay. Oh, a subscriber told me to put jelly on the rim of these chalk paints so they don't get crusty and it works just so you guys know. Okay. So now taking these containers, I'm wiping them with an alcohol wipe and I can't believe I don't have these in my stash because they are really beautiful. We're going to paint it with this blue. It was satin, so it showed up shiny, which I was not digging at all. So grabbing my plaid chip brush, I grabbed my white chalk paint and I distress these down. I let you guys, I like distressing. I do it in like every video. It's my vibe. Um, I think it adds more detail to a project, so you can leave it plain or you could distress it like this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and finish that up. Then taking our little plaques, I guess we'll call them. Uh, we are going to, at first I was like, oh, I'm gonna make these super even. Then I was like, nope, you're going rogue and uh, we're just gonna eyeball these. So just make sure that your bottles are all lined up so that we can try and get them the same height. Uh, but if not, we can say you did it on purpose. <laughs> and we're gonna finish that off. Then we're gonna put it all together. I decided to use some Spanish moss. It's like my new favorite. I like that it's a neutral color. It's a great filler for so many things. Uh, I love it. And then I'm gonna grab these mini roses from Dollar Tree. Now, these are the light yellow. They come in a bright yellow as well, but I just love how petite they are and the simplicity of them. And you guys, that's it. We are done with this first DIY. From the mystery box, I used the sign the wooden stickers, and the plastic container. So I actually used three in one DIY with this one. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know down below if you are digging this DIY. And yeah, I am taking the bamboo cutting board and I am finding our middle spot. I am going to be drilling a hole because this is, we are going to hang this up here. Now I am painting the side of the cutting board because we're going to be using a white scrapbook paper and I just thought it would look better I guess. I don't paint the back because it's beautiful as is. After that is done drying I am going to take a scrapbook paper or cardstock. It's actually from Cricut and I go ahead and apply my hot glue directly to our cutting board 
flip it around, and then I'm gonna cut it out. Now, I don't know what I was doing, but I butchered the top of this. I don't know what happened here. So I ended up taking my sanding block because I'm like, I gotta smooth that out and like make it work. And after I am done sanding it, I take my paintbrush that had the white paint on it, just kind of fill in where like the wood was kind of popping out. All right, poke a hole back through. Y'all, this DIY is like so easy. It's kind of cheating, okay? Okay, so now I'm taking this burlap. Now this is burlap gar garland. It's from Dollar Tree, founded in California this past summer. And we're gonna start by hot gluing the bottom. And I'm gonna take that side seam of the ribbon attach that, then bring in an around, I am going to hot glue it to the back. Now you don't wanna make this too, too tight because you wanna be able to stick, you know, florals in there. You could stick little notes and give it to a friend. This would be cute to like stick like a little gift card with a little bit of flowers and you know, little, little things, I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and finish this side up. Again, just hot gluing it down. I'm just patting the hot glue now i'm taking some twine i double it up putting some uh tape on there looping it through taking my coffee stained beads here putting two of them on then i'm going to tie a double knot so our beads don't go anywhere tie another knot a little further up top so we have our loop and now taking those same little florals. Aren't these so cute and petite? I love them. Okay, so I thought I was done and then I was like, nope, I can use this box to make a plaque. So it easily comes apart, sand the edges. I take Nantucket Blue by Waverly, paint it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sand the top of this because it was super rough. And it ended up coming like this really great color. Okay, so these are the flexible stencils from Dollar Tree. And let me tell you, if you find them, pick them up, especially these because they are so cute. So this is just a stencil brush from Dollar Tree. And I am just dabbing that white chalk paint on there. It comes out so beautiful. Look at this. Yes. And I'm just going to put some hot glue on the back of it and attach it. That's it. So in this DIY. We used the box and we use the bamboo cutting board. And y'all, the possibilities with this are really seriously endless because you could use any color scrapbook paper, any color burlap, or you could even use ribbon. So use your creativity and have so much fun with this. All right. So taking this metal flower, it had something else on it. I don't remember what it was because I took it apart, but I'm taking Nantucket Blue. We are gonna give this two coats of the Nantucket Blue. I decided to do it this way instead of spray painting it because I wanted the matte color on it. Now, speeding up, this had a texture, the, the petals did, so I wanted to make sure I make them pop by distressing them with my white. So we do that here, easy peasy. Dollar Tree sign, we're gonna take it apart. <laughs> then I take my mini plaid brush and I try painting this and I'm like, girl, you are a mess. Get a normal size paintbrush. So I do that. I'm gonna do one coat, let it dry. Now taking some ribbon that was from the mystery box, I'm gonna make a border with this on the top and the bottom. So I just hot glue it directly to the back. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squint. And we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom piece as well. Super cute, super simple. All right, so then taking the polka dot ribbon, I am going to be um, cutting the wire off of the sides because I wanted it thinner than the ribbon that was already laid down. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're just attaching it to the sides and the back. Don't worry, we're gonna cover all of this up here. There we go, finishing the top up. Okay, so then you guys, I cheated. I totally cheated, this is cheating. Or is it just being uh, smart? I don't know. Uh, but I'm taking that blue raffia and I'm going to use it to hang our sign. <laughs> That's, you guys, okay. It, I think it's smart. That's what I'm gonna say, not cheating. And uh, I just double knot it in the back. It is really thin, so that's why I'm tacking it down with a little bit of hot glue so to make sure that it stays. All right, 
So after that's all done, we are gonna get our flower. This right here is actually wire that I took out of the ribbon and I'm just attaching it to the sides here. And I like that it was silver and super thin so you couldn't see it at all. Not that it matters because we're gonna cover it up. I don't know why I said that. Okay, so we're gonna put it on both sides. Now I realized at this point that the flower was kind of hollow in the middle. So we needed something back there to be able to attach the flower to the sign. So what does your girl do? She grabs the pineapple little sticky things. Now make sure you put super glue on these too because we all know how hot glue and metal get along. They don't. So attach super glue and hot glue. I just layer these up. I'm gonna put one more on top here. I'm just gonna hot glue that one on since it's just on top of the wood. And now we have something to adhere the flower to the sign. Easy peasy, right? Now make sure you get it even because I didn't do that and you'll see why you want it even. I got the turquoise beads from the bag. I spray painted them blue. I put them on the wire and then I'm just kind of pulling that wire pretty tight, putting some hot glue. Then I took one of those slices sticker things and that is what I use to hold the wire down in the back. Now this is why I say make it even because uh, there's definitely more beads on the right side than the left side, but you know what? We can't all be perfect, right? Okay, and then I just distressed those down because I did use the spray paint so that they were kind of glossy. Now, you guys, we are covering the bags. Y'all called me out on my last DIY video. You guys know I have to cover the bags, but on that uh, Cricut video, I didn't cover the bags and I definitely heard it. So thank y'all for keeping me on my toes. Okay, so this is where you guys, I feel like sometimes when I'm doing these YouTube videos, I'm like, I personally love the simplicity of that sign just as it was, but I'm like, people are gonna be bored. People wanna see more, people want extra. So I was like, you know what, uh, let's just do a messy bow then. Um, so let me know after seeing it this way versus with the messy bow, how you preferred it. Because I really liked it just as is, but it still looks really cute with the messy bow. So I cut you guys four pieces out of each um, of these ribbons. Then I grab this ribbon that one of my subscribers, Teresa, sent me. Thank you so much. And you're just gonna start stacking these on top of each other. I even cut some of the ribbon in half. And this, you could use any color, any kinds of ribbon. Possibilities go on and on with messy bows. Now I'm gonna grab my little mini zip tie here. You could also just tie it off with twine too, that works. And I'm gonna cut that back off and then taking the smaller ribbon, I, yeah, gotta cut those down. Those were way too long. Taking the skinnier of the ribbons, I'm gonna wrap that around twice to cover my zip tie, tack it off in the back with some hot glue. We're gonna, no girl, no girl, you don't need to add no more, okay, just stop. I'm gonna attach it to the left side of our sign with some hot glue. And here we go. This is how it turned out. Let me know. Did you like it simple or did you like it with the messy bow? Uh, I feel like this was really different than what I usually do. I don't know why, but um, I still like it. Let me know how you guys feel about it. All right, so going in to our last DIY, y'all. These gave me some grief. Let me tell you guys, it took me two days, two days to even figure out what I wanted to do. I'm, I just finished this the night before this video came out and I even posted on our Unicorn Dust Designs group. All of you women gave me so many great ideas so I really appreciate it because I was absolutely stuck. So these are the leprechaun pots that were sent to me. I am going to um, paint all of these white. Now I did a sample one first and I only painted the bottom half of the pot white and then left the middle black, but you can see through the twine. So that's why I decided, you know what, I'm gonna paint all of the pot white. Then taking these little bowls, these are from Dollar Tree, you can find them in a 12 pack in their party section. I uh, paint these white. We do two coats on all four of these items. And now I'm taking Mineral by Waverly and uh, you guessed it, we're distressing them down, adding a little bit more detail to them so they're not just stark white. Okay, so I paint the inside rim of this with chalk paint because I didn't want you to be able to see the glossy 
this inside of there. Now we're gonna attach both of our pots together. I make sure I line up my handles and then taking our twine, I'm making sure that I start underneath the handle. So as you can see right there, that way we can make sure we cover it up. So y'all, I'm gonna go around and around and around this. If you are someone that likes to do crafts and listen to music, you think this kind of thing is relaxing, I certainly do not, <laughs> then definitely do it. So I wasn't gonna put you through the torture. This is how it was after like 25 minutes. <laughs> and now we are going to connect these all together to make our candle holders. Y'all, these are plastic, do not use real candles. Okay, don't use fire like I am either. Use LED candles in these. And we are gonna attach them together just using hot glue. Make sure placement's good on these because they can get really lopsided very fast. All right, so I'm just attaching the top and we are all done. Now y'all, I so debated not even putting this in my video, but I was like, you know what? Just because I'm not absolutely in love with these doesn't mean they're not somebody else's style. So I hope they're, even if it's just one person out there, I hope this is somebody else's style. All right, look at me all up in my garage. I have some space. All right, so we're gonna start off with this cabinet door. You can find cabinet doors on Facebook Marketplace, um, Habitat for Humanity, things like that are great places to find these doors. So I'm using my skill sander. I like this one because it has a pointed top, so it really gets great into the corners, up against edges, and then I'm gonna go in with my orbital sander. And why I'm sanding this is one, I'm getting all that debris off of there, all that old crusty stuff, and I wanna take off the first layer that is glossy on this so we have a nice smooth finish. So for those of you who have not seen me do DIYs with these cabinet doors yet, um, funny story, I found them on Facebook Marketplace and I contacted the gentleman, it was like 15 for free. And I was like, okay, where's pickup? And he says, oh, so-and-so funeral home. And right away I was all, what? Are these like the like samples for the different caskets you offer? Like how creepy, but you know what? It was for free. So your girl picked it up, of course. And then I get there and it turns out that uh, he used to be a cabinet maker and then ended up taking the family business, which was the funeral home. He took it over. So it was so funny. Obviously your girl will do anything for free items like go to a funeral home. I mean, shoot, it's okay. It's free, right? Okay, so anyways, off of that story. Now finishing this up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some simple green. There is a lady, her name is Brie. I'm gonna link her channel up above right here in the cards. And I just found her. She does a lot of upcycling and she cleans all of her furniture pieces off with crud cutter before painting, which is what I need to do. So keep that in mind. So right here, I'm just taking a toothbrush, getting in all those nooks and crannies in this frame, making sure I get all the dirt out. And then I'm just going to wipe it off, let it dry. And then I'm in here, I am taking, I'm in here, yeah, hello. I am taking Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. I'm just getting those edges, especially the corners, because this sponge roller is amazing. It has a flat edge to it. And so it gets up really great against like the sides of things. So although it was getting good there, it wasn't getting in the corners very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three coats of this white, y'all. For some reason I cut the second part of this frame or this video out of like me making this, which just makes me so upset. But um, yeah, okay, well, Sammy, let's just get on with it. Okay, I'll tell you which part I cut out. So I am doing the second and third layer on this. Now I'm gonna grab some painter's tape and this is the part I accidentally left off. So after I apply the painter's tape to this, there's like an inside frame right here that I'm trying to tape off. And I do the baking soda with still gray and I paint the inside frame that color because I wanted it to have a lot of texture. I wanted that concrete look, here we go. I don't know how I cut that out of my video, but I do show you the white part. So just, just hang in there with me. So I got pretty clean lines here. When I took the tape off, it left some like crusty, so I just dust that off with our paintbrush. And now I'm going to 
just go in, gotta clean up that workspace. So now I'm gonna take the Rust-Oleum Linen White, I'm gonna take the baking soda. Now the baking soda, this was my first time ever playing around with baking soda, so I don't think I added it as much as I should, but I was so happy with the texture it left me. So I'm just mixing it, I did equal parts, um, and I, I like it. it. It came out like, it almost has like a cement texture, like a pavement texture to it, and I'm sure you get more the more you add to it, but I just went around with my brush, I applied it just like you would paint. I just smoothed it over back and forth. Now I will say, because I wasn't getting like a ton of texture that I was looking for on this, I end up, you know how on chalk paint when it's semi-dry, like it's almost to the dry point and then you go to put another coat on it and it kind of like drags up that first coat. Well, that's what I did here. I got in with a second coat, like when it was almost dry and it started kind of like pooling it and giving it more texture. It almost looked like chipped paint almost. You can't see it in the frame, but it absolutely looks so gorgeous. So there's my hunk of hunk of burning love giving me a kiss. Okay, now I made this stencil on my Cricut. Unfortunately, this is way too big. I don't know how to ship it out or else I would add it to my Etsy shop. Um, but I'm using Oral Mask 813 Stencil Vinyl. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tape off all my edges so we don't make any mistakes. And then, okay, well, I'll take my transfer tape off first. And then taking that same sponge roller, we are going to do two coats over this, nice thin coats. Now this ended up bleeding on me a little, which I knew was gonna happen because the texture of the cabinet door was not very smooth, um, but that's okay because I didn't want it to look polished and you know, all fancy schmancy. I wanted it to look like it was worn and rustic. That's totally my vibe. So after two coats, we peel this off it, this is seriously like my favorite. And I think it's just our, the saying. It says our home, our life, our story, our love, our children, our dreams. This is us. And I absolutely love it. Love this. I cannot wait to put it in the home. So we're going to go ahead and weed all of those little bits and pieces I out. I don't know why I keep on the, like with this weird accent right now. I don't, I don't know. It's not a weird accent. It's just why am I doing it? Oh, it's probably because I was talking to Kathy Jo. Thanks, Kathy Jo. I'll leave her channel up above too and in my description box. So now I'm just taking my mini like uh, distressing brush by Plaid and I am distressing the edges on the outside to really bring that texture up at you. I wanted it to pop out at you and it totally did the job. Then I am taking the white and distressing the gray a little bit. And I did that because it had so many lines in it that I really wanted to stand out. And this is how it came out. Do you see, I'm, I'm trying to, it's hard because it's so bright, but it did add this beautiful texture. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. If you can get your hands on cabinet doors, grab some, because they are amazing for making signs. And I'll prop this up on our hall tree. Okay, y'all, this is the next one. So this is like a wooden plaque from Michaels. I had it a while back, stained it, never did anything with it. And guess what we're using? Our balls, our big giant balls. I had five left and I was like, we are gonna put them to use today. If y'all don't know the funny story with these balls, we were all shook when we saw them, trust me. I will leave the uh, video for that down in the description box. So at first I take this Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel. And I coat all of these. Then I was like, what are you doing? These are supposed to be gray. Don't know how I went from beige to gray. So then I get this, uh, I think it's called Shipyard Gray by Arteza. And this is an outside acrylic paint. And I mentioned that because I will explain a little further down the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of these. These are the sliced wooden beads these are way too big to be called beads but um these are actually the two inch ones just so you know so we're gonna go ahead and dry those off 
Then moving over to our plaque, we are also going to be applying the gray paint because we are going to be using our crackle medium. So you do need that base. Now keep in mind when you use crackle medium, you want to use contrasting colors so you can really see that crackle come through. So that is why I am painting the base gray because when it crackles, I want the gray to be like showing through in those cracks. So after I was done doing that, I got a little vinyl decal that said gather. I thought it just added a little something to it. Now I'm adding my folk art crackle medium. You only need a super light coat of this and you just want to do kind of like one swipe of it. You don't want to keep going over the same spot or it gets gummy and it will not turn out well. So I go ahead and I dry this. Now I say the outdoor acrylic paint because when I put my top coat on here, which is just a white acrylic apple barrel paint, it didn't give me like the crazy crackle effect that it usually does. So I don't know if the outdoor acrylic paint had something to do with it, but it still worked. You can see the crackle already coming through right here. And this was my first time also using a decal with the crackle. So I was really happy with it still. Um, make sure you only, you go over one time with your brush. Again, you don't want to keep going over the same spot because it'll pull up that crackle and it'll look so grody. Okay. So after that is all dry, I am going to weed out that decal. It looks so cute. It was just like that little, that little baby touch, you know? And then I did put the crackle medium on the legs too. Granted, I know the legs aren't probably gonna show, but that is the difference between a eh project and a, this is a finished product. Like I want, I wanna look at it and think, you know what, if somebody looked at this, they would think I bought it at a store because it is so finished. That That's why I do it. Okay, ooh, look at that crackle, crackle, crackle. Now you can spray this with like a clear, you could put polyacrylic on it. I did end up spraying it with a clear after this and it's not in the video. Okay, so now I'm applying super glue and hot glue. Now, one of my subscribers, she said her husband was an engineer and said, if you apply super glue and then put hot glue over it, it counteracts it so it doesn't actually even work, which I thought was interesting. So for this one, I am trying to make sure that I put the super glue in the middle, hot glue on the outside. Of course, Hank had to say hi to mommy, leave a bunch of fur on my leggings. Yeah, all right, so we finished that up and we're all done. And look at how beautiful this tray turned out. I love the crackle effect. I love just that little gather. It, it's simple. I think it's beautiful. I like how big it is. And then see, see the little baby legs? I love it. Okay, next one. I love this one. So this is a home sweet home sign from Dollar Tree. We're gonna go ahead and take this baby apart. Set that to the side. Now this is the bath mat. You guys better be watching my Dollar Tree hauls because I show you what I'm gonna be using. So with this, I am just cutting it to size. Cut it a little too big. And we need it to fit in this frame. So I'm gonna, I keep referencing and then going back and cutting a little bit more. Now I accidentally cut too much off here. So there is like a big gap, you'll see. I like try to fit it into the frame once more and this is super easy to cut like way easy and y'all i'll tell you right now i'm going to be using this on a lot of diys so pick some up all right so then i try to hot glue it in the suction cup part and i'm like girl this ain't even gonna reach so then i realized i have to go in between the suction cups and hot glue on those little rounds then i get smarter and do strips of it just going all the way down works like a charm this is when I realized I have a big gap, but you know what? You gotta get your creative mind going. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna cut another piece off. I'm gonna hot glue it. I'll kind of cut the excess. So I do that. I don't, I don't show you all that because it took me some time to figure it out, you know? All right, now taking our, I think this one is just white by Waverly. I am coating this up. Y'all see, do you see all of that dimension it adds to this sign? Like blown away, absolutely love it. Now I'm taking my steel gray and my distressing brush and I'm distressing it. 
And let me tell you guys, if you don't like distressing, don't do it. This is just for inspiration. Keep it clean, keep it simple. Like that is totally up to you. Remember, it's all about the bones of these DIYs. Be creative and make it your own. Make it fit your decor style in your home. This is just my preference. This is how I decorate my home. And to be honest, I I spend money on this, so I'm gonna I want it to fit my home and what I like. All right, you guys, so of course I cover the back like I usually do with our shipping paper, nice and clean back. That's, oh, I love that, I love it. it, makes me so happy. All right, and then you guys, for the frame, I put two coats of the uh, steel gray on. So right here, I am taking this, one of my subscribers, Kelly, sent me these, and I don't know if they're quite coasters or just wood cutouts, but they're the thinner wood. I'm gonna stain it, de-stress it white, and then I got this um, off Cricut. It's one of their, in their design access. I'm gonna go ahead and put that, um, well, let's dry the paint first, lady, so your vinyl sticks. And this came out like, I don't know. All of these, I really, really am proud of all of these. So now I'm gonna just stress our frame. I, I want to, Nobody out there in the YouTube world better copy me. I'm just, I'm totally kidding. I <laughs> I was just going to say that I can't wait to make this on a bigger, like a bigger version of this. So then I'm just hot gluing this, the little plaque on there and look at how beautiful this is. That dimension that the floor mat like adds to this is just everything. I am obsessed with it and I cannot wait to make a bigger bolder version of it. Oh, I hope you guys love that as much as I do. Okay, these cathedral windows. So these are the new ones from Dollar Tree. Now, as I'm looking at the back, I notice there's three screws on the back and I'm like, ooh, girl, let's take this apart. And guess what? You get to use that black piece for something else, right? So I take the signs off, which actually pop off super easy. And then right here, I'm just heating up the hot glue so I don't have like a big bump on the front. I'm gonna repeat this step by taking the signs off of the front for all of the other three. We're gonna be using four total in today's DIY project. Now we have seen this being done with the garden fences. And I thought, you know what, this would be nice. It's a lot more sturdy, it's thicker, and it just looks a little bit more polished. So I was like, I'm gonna try my hand at it using these. So you guys, I am using that same mixture of the baking soda and our still chalk paint. And right here I am painting it. Oh, gosh, of course I'm painting it. Uh, I'm getting in all the, I'm gonna say nooks and crannies a lot, and aren't I? Okay, so anyways, we are gonna paint this whole thing. Now, I get smarter. I always have to try the first time and then buy the second one. So paint all around your edges first, okay? It just helps. And then you are going to get the top, leave the middle blank so you have something to hold down, you know? And I'm really just like stippling this on. I'm not brushing it on. I'm really like pouncing it. That way I get a little bit more texture out of it. And that seems to really help. And it was easier getting in like, you know, the holes of this cathedral window. So we are going to repeat this painting process for the other two. Then I get our white chalk paint and I just do some dry brushing, really trying to bring out those windows. <coughs> Excuse me. And I love the texture that the uh, baking soda gives us. It really makes these look like cement cathedral windows, which I love. Now I will say, I wish I would have taken all of these out before starting this project and getting a matte gray spray paint and spray painting the insides of them because I totally forgot to do that. And I was regarding it as I was putting it together. So we are gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other three remaining ones, I try to focus a lot of the dry brushing inside the windows so that you almost get like a shadow effect from it. Now taking one of the paper signs that we took off of the cathedral windows, I paint the back because it was still in really good condition. 
I tried painting over the letters, but oh my gosh, it was just not covering up at all. So I chose to use the back. Then taking these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree, I tried a couple different things. I even tried, do I want to know, or do I want to put like wording on it or anything? And nothing was coming to mind. So I ended up just sticking with the simplicity of this with the leaves on it. So add your own thing and I could always come back and add it later. All right, so since we took the black part off, we need something to be able to hold these together. Now, if you leave the black part on, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. Uh, but for me, I wanted to take advantage of those other pieces. So taking the wooden dowels, I'm just hot gluing them. I cut them down a size, then I hot glue them and I'm hot gluing them to almost like the edge of this piece. So the inside the edge, so it sits flush because you don't want it falling in there. I hope this is, you know, I hope I'm explaining this well. So then I cut some more down to size. Now you're gonna have to put these wooden dowels in two out of four of the ones that you are doing, okay? And you will see why. This is gonna give us a base to attach our little windows to. So as you can see right here, I'm gonna put hot glue on these wooden dowels and that is what is gonna to connect to the other one. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that again. And this is when I realized, oh, crapola, you didn't paint the insides of them. All right, here we go. Attach those to the wooden dowel. And then the other one, which is laying down right now, uh, that's the other one that will have wooden dowels in it. So, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, girl, you messed up. You should have painted the inside. But I, okay, I just do like a quick kind of brush on like at least the top pieces because I knew I was going to add a lot of greenery to it so it wouldn't be like, oh my gosh. But so here we go. I put more wooden dowels in that one and we are all done with this. I like the thickness of, oh, I'm adding white to the outside edges because I didn't do that when I was painting the first time. So this is how it came out. I love how bold it is. I like the thicker windows on this. And if you can see this in person, the cement look that it has is so amazing. It looks very old and I don't know, like it has a story to it. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Subscribe and here's Hank. Why are you so handsome, my Hanky? Oh, stop following me. Stop following me. What? And then my beautiful Momo. Yeah, we're going to take this embroidery hoop. I got a bunch of these on Facebook Marketplace for like $5 or something. Um, we are also going to grab some burlap. You could get this at Walmart, any of your craft stores, burlapfabric.com. I mean, anywhere. So um, for these embroidery hoops, they come in two pieces and that is gonna help hold our fabric and our lace. So I do decide to put the lace in. So we're gonna take the top off, lay it over, and then we're going to put the top back over this, okay? Then you're gonna pull that. You want that tight because you don't want it to sag. You're gonna tighten up your embroidery hoop again. Now taking um, scissors, I am just cutting this down so I can hot glue it inside the embroidery hoop so you don't have a bunch of extra hanging out there for everybody to see. Now, I don't know if there's an easier way to do this. This is just what I found worked for me. This was my first time ever making one of these, so this is what I did. Make sure to put finger protectors on. Look at me. I even used the fingers that the finger protectors were on. I like to use the other fingers all the time. All right, so after we're done with that, oh, that looks crooked now. Okay, so now taking these wood slice beads I got on Amazon, they are in my Amazon, uh, Amazon description. Oh my gosh, my description box, the Amazon link's in there. Okay, there, that's what I was trying to say. So if you're like me, I have to line everything out first before I could commit. I have to see it. I need the visual before I can commit. So after lining them up, I'm just hot gluing them one by one. We're gonna do that all the way around. What's nice about the embroidery hoop is you have that thickness to attach these onto. So it works so well. And then 
Um, taking this welcome piece, this was from Dollar Tree in the three pack. I think it was during fall. I just spray painted that blue. Then I hot glued that over our ribbon. Now I'm taking plaster by Waverly. I'm gonna paint all of those beads white. I am not getting the embroidery hoop, um, just the beads. And at first I was gonna leave it the natural wood color, but with the ribbon there, I felt like it needed it. Like it needed that extra little pop. So I was actually really happy with it. And now taking these blue roses, I am gonna go spray paint them. I am gonna spray paint them blue. It works out amazing. Look at how pretty those came out. All right, now I'm taking some lambs ear from Walmart zip ties if you guys watch my channel you know zip ties are my jam when it comes to florals and bows they are so easy to use you can reuse the florals they hold everything in place i love them so i took three different zip ties to secure it in the middle and on the sides the lambs here at walmart is two of these pieces basically for a dollar two dollars no yeah two dollars and next I'm gonna take those roses I spray painted and I am just gonna glue these and for whatever reason, these were sticking so nice to the lamb's ear like material and no problems with it at all. So after playing around with placement, I'm gonna hot glue everything on here. Now, when you're doing these, and you guys, the, the little white ones for fillers are German status. They almost look like dried kind of like tissuey like flowers but they're great for fillers um just make sure when you're doing projects like this play around with placement before you commit and that's it you guys that that's all there is to this wreath it was so easy and i love the way that it came out excuse my head as usual and you can tie a piece of twine to the top but this hung very well just as is so let me know what you think about it. It was my first time doing one of these um, beaded hoops, but I really liked it. I really liked trying the spray paint over the flowers. It worked great. All right, all all right the next one. I don't know if this one's my favorite or the first one is. Let, let me know which one's your favorite out of this video. So taking a bamboo cutting board, we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with, we're gonna use some more of the sliced beads. Now these sliced beads, Ooh, I'll have to put the sizes because they are different sizes. So at first I thought I was going to go around this whole board with these sliced beads. However, once I lined them up on the top and the bottom, I was like, oh, uh, I like this vibe. I'm, I'm digging this. So I decided to go this route and I'm just going to hot glue all of these on here. And uh, you can use wood glue. You could use super glue, whatever preference, but hot glue and wood that they're besties they do very well together all right so after i'm done gluing all those i'm going to take this wall base from dollar tree you can also get these at hobby lobby wait till they go 50 percent off and they're very inexpensive so after i finally get that darn sticker off oh my gosh that took forever i'm going to take the wood beads i'm going to sporadically put them on there at first, I thought I was going to line them up with the edge, but I was like, no, this reminds me of like one of those like milk vases, you know, I don't know. So taking the wood beads, I'm going to do half super glue. And then on the other half, I'm putting hot glue. We all know that uh, hot glue and metal, they don't dig each other. They don't like each other. So we have to mix that super glue in there so that we ensure that it stays onto the metal. So after I'm done doing all that, we are gonna get Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. And I am gonna go around, uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna start with this one first. Now, I don't know why I use this paintbrush because I end up changing the paintbrush anyways. But I'm gonna get a stenciling brush from Dollar Tree is what I'm gonna switch over to so that I can get in on the sides of those beads, make sure that they're all covered up. But when I started doing that, gosh, so did I want to show you all of this painting? How boring am I? Come on, move on. There we go. Okay, stencil brush in action. So I'm doing like a pouncing, almost like a stippling effect to make sure I get full coverage on those sliced beads. And then to keep the stippling effect, I just go over the paints and it actually creates like this kind of 
texture, which I really liked. Uh, so I was just explaining to you what I was doing there. So you weren't like, why is she bouncing that all over her sign? All right, so after that's done, we're gonna take the wall base and I am going to paint the top of this. Don't worry about the back because it's not gonna show. And I'm gonna leave the inside um, silver because we're gonna use grays with this. So I thought it went very well. So I'm gonna, con I cannot talk. Continue doing the sides. Why do you use that brush? You know it already doesn't work, but you're gonna do it anyways, right? All right, now taking the stencil brush that we know works, I am just gonna cover all of this up. I only do one coat of paint. Then I am distressing it down with my steel gray chalk paint. Again, preference, if you guys don't like distressing, leave it just your basic, simple color. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna hit the sides. And once you hit the sides, it almost looks like the steel is like kind of popping through, which I really like. Okie dokie, artichoke. Now taking our vinyl. I got this image straight from Cricut Design Space. I did not design it myself. And I am just using gray permanent vinyl. It says life is short, live it. I just, I absolutely loved it when I saw it. All right, taking this wood um, backing, I am going to distress some gray on this just to kind of make it all vibe together. These you can get at Michael's for so cheap when they go on clearance. I think I found a bunch of these like a few summers back. They were 70% off. I think they were like $3 or something like that. And I bought a bunch of them. All right, so now we are gonna put all of this together here. Oh, look at how cute that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I think it's one fourth inch screws and you can see the holes are already in that wall base tin thing for us so i just screw it right in it's great because it's added security and then i'm just going to hot glue the sign straight onto the wood here it already has a backing on it like a hanger it's just a twine hanger and uh now i'm going to show you how i ended up decorating it which is super simple i just added some lamb's ear in here and look at how gorgeous this looks. I mean, and it goes with any kind of decor. You could change the florals out as the seasons change. I mean, I really, really love this. Let me know. All right, for this next one, I was inspired by these tile pieces that Teresa sent me and they didn't fit on anything. So I got the boxes. These are the ones that have like the drawers in them from Dollar Tree. And I just hand drew on them. Um, I did do two, but this one I'm just gonna show you. I took, these are actually 3D fabric paints from Arteza, and I am just basically following what I did. Now you can use any puff paints. Dollar Tree even sells puff paints. I do like the Arteza ones though because they come out very thin. They don't get those air bubbles, which you know if you've used puff paint before can totally kill a project if you have that like ball of air that comes out and shoots the puff paint, it's horrible. So I am just tracing all of this out. You're gonna let it dry. You could even use like stencils. I mean, you could really draw anything on these and do the same thing that I'm doing. I was inspired by seeing some like metal kind of sign that look like this. So here we go, here's both of them. Now taking these wood pieces I got from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, this is like a four pack, I think it's $3.99. They were 50% off, so it was way less than a dollar for each of them, or not way less, but you get what I'm saying. Then taking these spindles I got from Facebook Marketplace. You guys know I'm obsessed with Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> I cut those down to size. Now we're gonna take the linen white chalk paint, we're gonna paint everything white, everything white. The only thing that um, things that are going to get two coats are the fronts of these boxes and the spindles since they were darker. Now, I didn't mind that the black was kind of popping through um, with the puff paint, but I didn't, I, I wanted to add gray. So that's why I decided to do two coats instead of one on the puff paint side, but it's going to be preference for you. Um, imagine you guys, you can do these like if you have a modern theme or something like geometric shapes, anything. Now taking that uh, steel gray, I am just 
seriously flicking the stencil brush like back and forth and distressing this down. And um, like I've said, uh, uh, Tara, she says, uh, don't, don't stress, de-stress, de-stress, don't stress. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, anyways, so let's go ahead and distress all of these down and you will see once we get to um, this part, oh, it just makes the puff paint like pop out at you and I love it. Okay, so now taking our wood pieces on the bottom, I am going to draw an X, easy peasy, to find our middle spot. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom of our wood sign, uh, our wood boxes. And this is going to let us know where to put our spindles. So taking the spindles, I'm gonna use this wood glue from Dollar Tree. We're gonna put it on the outer edge, and then I'm gonna put hot glue in the middle of it. Now, you might think there's no way this is gonna hold, but let me tell you, I have made other um, candle stick holders before. I'll link that video down in the description box. And I use the wood glue and the hot glue, and those things are so sturdy. I still use them in my living room today, and I can validate it works just fine. So now taking the wood glue again, we're doing the same thing, a circle, some hot glue in the middle, and then make sure you get that upper box lined up with the bottom square so you have a nice straight line. And we're gonna do the same thing for this side. And that is it for this project. And you guys, you can use these as candle holders or you'll see how I display them. I just put some greenery in there and I think this is nice. Look at, I was thinking, oh my gosh, these would work for coastal farmhouse as well because it looks like a sand dollar. I love it and I love the detail of the spindles. Y'all go to Habitat for Humanity garage sales and pick up some spindles, okay? All right, so our last one, we are gonna take, this is the pie pan. This is like the smaller version, I think, because there's the deeper one I've used previously, um, but this one is the smaller. I don't, I don't know what pan is what pan, but we are going to cover the entire thing with white linen chalk paint. I am gonna do two coats on the inside of it, but we will be covering the outside. So. I only do one coat out here. Now, my pro my thinking process behind the Mod Podge was that glue doesn't like to adhere to metal. So maybe if I put the barrier of chalk paint and Mod Podge, I would have a better chance with it adhering and not peeling off of my metal pie pan. So I'm gonna finish doing that, let it dry. I don't put it in the um, top part because no matter if Mod Podge says it's matte or not, it's not. And surprise, we are using our bath mat again, y'all. So we are gonna cut a strip of this off. And I know a lot of you said in my Dollar Tree hauls that you ended up picking some of these up, so good for you. And if you haven't, pick them up, because I'll be using them a lot. All right, so I am gonna cut a strip off. And in this strip, I am making sure that I get the bigger circle and the one smaller circle that is right beneath it, okay? And then I'm, I play around with the placement and realize I need to cut this down a little bit more. So what I do is I cut half of that smaller circle off and then it fits perfectly on the side of this pan. So we're gonna hot glue this on. Make sure when you're hot gluing, don't put the hot glue in that big circle because it puffs out. So it's not gonna adhere to anything. You need to make sure you're putting the hot glue around the circle and on all of like the connector points that are nice and straight. And this adheres so nicely to this. And I'm gonna take it all the way around doing the same thing. We're just gonna hot glue. Don't worry what it looks like now with the hot glue under it because we will be covering it. So the one strand didn't fit, so you will have to grab another piece, just cut it down to size the same way we did before, hot glue that baby right on there, and then we are going to come back in with that Rust-Oleum Linen White, and we are gonna cover the clear up. You can even use a different color too if you wanted to. So I am just taking a chip brush, I like doing the tip chip brush for these because the bristles get in all of like the little nooks and crannies um, in the design. And after that, 
you guessed it, we're gonna take the Still Gray once again, my mini um, plaid chip brush, and we are going to distress it. Now, if you're not into distressing, I get it, but with something like this, it really does make the details pop out at you so you could really see all the dimension that's there. All right, so we need legs for this little baby. So uh, race car time. Um, so pulling in the, the whole beaded thing we had going on, I am going to place, uh, these are I think 20 millimeter balls, um, beads, wood beads, whatever. On the bottom of this, I am not, I have no idea how far apart I'm putting these. I'm just eyeballing it. I am gonna paint these white, distress them with the gray, and then we have ourselves a cute little, I guess it would be like a, a tray, right? I don't know, but super cute. I love all of the detail that the bathtub mat adds to this. Do you see that? How beautiful is this? I love it. Let me know what you think of this with the bath mat and if you've purchased one. All right, you guys, that is it for the DIYs today. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you like, subscribe. Are you too tired? Are you tired, mommy? Oh, you look tired. Oh, yeah. Exhausting. Oh, you too? Rough morning? Rough morning just laying there? I see that tail. I see it. I see you going. And there's my pretty face, huh? Look at the old boy. Is that your little tonguey? Look at you. Yeah, you do. Okay, so the first DIY. Look at this weathered scrap piece of wood. I am loving it. So we're going to take this and then I'm going to just go in with a... Um, a sanding block. This is like the roughest sanding block you can find at Dollar Tree. I'm just cleaning it up. I love all the dirt and the the gunk on it. So I don't want it to be like fully polished up. I just want to get the debris off. And then of course our little ladybug. That helps clean up so much. Okay. So after I'm done with that, I just kind of wipe it down trying to get that excess off because if you don't get that excess off, your vinyl will not stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure the top at least attempt to measure the top. I'm gonna mark off my holes and then I'm gonna get my drill gun and drill that straight through and you'll see why later. Um, I definitely highly recommend investing in a drill gun, y'all. Uh, so after that, we're gonna take our linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and I am gonna give this a light coat. Now I will say I didn't intend for the sign to be this way. I actually wanted to put the vinyl down first and paint over it so you could see the wood, but it is what it is. All right, y'all. So we've already went over the basics of how I create my shapes and then put my letters in. For those of you that have never done it vertically, all you have to do is highlight your entire box and you come up here and see the align. You're going to align um, it. You could do center vertically and then to make sure that your letters are right on top of each other, you will then, which I already did, um, come up here to arrange and then you will make sure that they are in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and we are actually going to use, yes, our Cricut Joy. So you guys know I always use the Cricut Maker. I am busting this beauty out and we are going to try it out for the first time together. Okay. So it just checked the length of my material. This is the smart vinyl. Excuse, it's on the floor, but it's such a long piece. But this is the smart vinyl. It doesn't need a mat, which I think is the coolest darn thing ever. And if any of you make wood signs, you know how cool this feature is and that this is going to cut 41 inches worth of a stencil for me. Ah! Okay, so doing this together for the first time, let's see how it goes. So I just press go. And it's connected to my Bluetooth here. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. oh gosh. Floor isn't probably the best place to put this since I have dog hair everywhere. But yes. All right. So I'm going to let this go and then I will come back on and let you know what I think. You guys, this machine moved so fast. I mean, and it still blows my mind that this is cutting 41 inches of vinyl without a mat. 
and I am just shook. I can't believe it took me this long to take this out of the box. I don't know why I was so intimidated by it. Okay, now we're taking it. I already put the transfer tape over it, which the Cricut Joy, they have sizes. So it's smart vinyl. And then they also have the same size in their transfer tape as well. So after playing around, I finally got it on. I'm just rubbing that down here. And now taking my chalk paint, Rich Black by Folk Art, and it's, this is actually a chalk paint brush, but I'm using it as a stencil, like to paint the stencil, and it works very well. And y'all, you will never guess how great that's turned out. Look at this, and look at this long sign in one swipe. I did not have to slice this image. It cut in one, this took me less than 20 minutes to make because I did not have to slice the image. I didn't have to connect different pieces of my vinyl. Oh, and right here, I'm just sanding it down with that same rough sanding block. And then we are going to take some nautical rope after that. I'm using the thinner version from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna tie this in a knot right here. And I love the way this turned out. And I still cannot believe this took me less than 20 minutes with the Cricut Joy. Like, hello. And look at how gorgeous and distressed this is. And y'all, you need to check out the Cricut Joy. I'm not, I'm not playing with you, especially if you're someone starting off. It is a great beginner machine. All right, All right our next wood DIY. So I got a bunch of this scrap wood off of Facebook Marketplace for like dirt cheap. And there were these people of um, fencing. So these are like rough, like super, super rough, even have nails still in them rough. So I'm gonna line all of these up together. I'm gonna get my super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree. Y'all, this stuff works just as good as like the Gorilla wood glue. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna connect all of those together. You need to let them dry. And then I'm taking that same linen white. I love how rough these pieces of wood are like love them. Do you see that texture on there? So we're going to go ahead and finish painting this and then we're going to hop on over. No, no, we're not. No, we're not hopping on over to our Cricut maker yet. So after we're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the large paint stir sticks and we are going to use that to measure and then, you know, amp this up just a little bit more. So make sure to measure the top and the bottom. I tell y'all, it's not the same size on the top and the bottom. So don't get all cut and happy. Measure both of them out. And then I'm gonna take my table saw, like you've seen me do a lot of times, and I'm gonna cut those down to size. And after we're done with that, I wanted these to match. I didn't want them to look brand new on this weather piece of wood. So I took hazelnut, painted those, and that's by Waverly. And then I took um, the white and kind of just you know, gave it a distressed look so it blended in with the fencing as well. Now I'm going to apply this with um, the same wood glue and then I'm using hot glue on this. You guys can also nail them in for added security if you'd like. And after I know that, I'm going to measure my width and my height in between those two pieces and we're gonna go head over to the Cricut Maker. Okay, y'all, so I designed this in Cricut Design Space. I used like the pig image and the banner from Design Access and then just paired together different fonts for this. Um, I did already weld it all together so that it'll cut in one piece. We will be using infusible ink. So when we press make it over here, you could see it's one image. Now it's telling me to use um, a 24 inch mat, but we are only cutting, we're cutting less than 12 inches. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press continue. And then we have to mirror our image because we have to flip this image on to our board. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that. And then I'm gonna do, where are you? Infusible ink transfer sheet right there already got that loaded and we are going to go ahead and cut and then we're going to move on to our sign. All right. So now that we got that all cut out, the infusible ink sheets like pop out. You don't need to weed them. You actually need to like bend them and the paper kind of pops out 
on them. It's actually really cool. But I do have to tell you guys, learn from my mistakes because I left this out after cutting it for two days. That is a big no-no. The infusible ink needs to stay in its black bag in a closed space. It should not be sitting like out in the open, but I was convinced that I was not gonna waste this. So here I am, I'm gonna try it. So I put it face down, that's why we mirrored it in our studio. Taking some butcher paper, I did 385 at 80 seconds, and I am gonna press down on this. Now you will see after I'm done with my first attempt here, this was my first time doing this on wood. Everything I do with you guys is usually first time. You can see it did not show up like I thought it would. And that's because I left it out in the open. So I went back to my cutting machine, my Cricut Maker, and I cut it out once again. And I was like, no, this is not going to be a fail project. So here I am. This time I'm going to use heat resistant tape from Cricut. That's going to help hold it down. So I try it again. Now I will say, if you were to use like a wood round or something and try this on a smooth surface, it would probably come out flawless. Mine, however, I am on weathered wood. There are nooks, there are crannies, there's a bunch of grooves. So it's going to be hard for that infusible ink to get in all those nooks and crannies. So I go over um, my image like four different places. You can see right here. Yes. Okay. I'm totally digging that. Um, it almost looks like it's sun bleached. Now I'm just drilling holes. You actually don't even need a drill to put these hooks in. You could just apply pressure and twist them. I was just making it easier on myself here. And uh, yeah, I love it. I wanna try the infusible ink on a wood round. Oh my gosh, it would probably be awesome, especially with all the prints they have in infusible ink sheets. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now I'm gonna feed my twine or my nautical rope through here, the rope, whatever it's called. And I wanted it, of course, to like go with my grocery sign. And then I just put some white on those hooks just to blend it all in. And this is how it came out. Now you can use this. I mean, imagine too, if you didn't want a kitchen, you could use this in the bathroom and like put that basket on there, hang some little towels. You can do kitchen, you, kitchen utensils on here. And you guys, that was so fun and so easy to make. And I'm so glad I tried it on wood because you guys know I love my wood signs. So definitely worth trying out with the infusible ink. All right, last one. You guys, this scrap wood, look at all this. Like this one even has like tons of nails still stuck on it. I have a bunch of different pieces. So this I think was flooring or molding. I have no idea, but I cut them down to size. Sorry for like kind of like that filmy uh, look. My phone was dirty from cutting these pieces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of these in linen white. Uh, I don't cut or paint the middle there or the base, I should say. So now I'm just taking my wood glue and hot glue and we're gonna glue our ends on first. And then I do the bottom, you guys. Oh, where is my mind? I literally put that on the bottom of the side. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on the side, there you go, that it's attaching to. Then our front. Now, I should have put wood glue and hot glue on the sides of this piece as well. Don't know what I was thinking, but if you were to like sell these or something, you would need to put um, nails through here just for added security. So just a heads up if that's on your mind. All right, so now that that's done, can't wait to show you this. Okay, so we're over at our Cricut Maker and y'all, I'm so excited. I just learned how to do this myself, so I'm excited to show you. So I already pre-made a rectangle and then got my text typed out, which says recipes, and this is in the font Easton. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this into my box, and then I'm gonna go to arrange, move forward. So I am making the box bigger because we are going to make this a reusable stencil. So I'm gonna highlight everything, and then I'm gonna come over here to the, the bottom right, do slice, Do you see how it separates everything here? So we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. And then we're gonna come over to shapes again. And I am going to get a square. And I am going to turn this into any day now. Come on, click. 
like little little baby lines okay i'm gonna let's make them red so you guys can kind of see them i'm gonna duplicate i need two of them and we have to make sure see the inside of like the r and then the p we need those to be connected if we want to use this as a reusable trans uh, a reusable stencil so i'm going to go ahead and turn this one here put it right there okay so you see that now we are going to highlight the entire thing and again weld it okay so now you see that it's connected all right so now you guys i am using no joke index dividers this is from the dollar tree there's eight in here okay i already did a practice run i told you this is my first time doing this they do make stencil film as well uh, this is what I had on hand and I was like, oh, I am so, so trying this on my Cricut. So again, so here it is. It's already lined up for us. And then remember, we already made this box so that we are not going to go outside the lines when we paint. I am going to press continue. And then you guys, this is how easy the Cricut is to use. Okay. Like browse materials. Ooh, ooh, hello, focus, right? And then I'm going to go down to, I mean, you guys could see how many materials this thing cuts. It's absolutely insane. Okay. So let me go down. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. No, not paper. Plastic. Okay. Has all these different options for plastic. Well, right there. It says stencil film. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click stencil film. And you guys, this cuts like butter. So let's go over here. And it's going to start cutting for us. It's going to detect that we have the right tool, which we do. And yeah, let's get this bad boy cut. We'll go ahead and we, I am so excited that I figured out how to do this. Do you know how much money this would save you in the long run? If you're somebody that makes like repeat items for craft shows or, oh my gosh. Or like even during the holidays. Oh, okay. You guys, this cut so fast, so, so fast. And the setting, everything worked out perfectly. I didn't have to adjust anything on the machine. Oh my, God, I'm so excited. There we go. Okay, so now we're back. Now you're gonna weed this out just like you would any normal vinyl piece. But the thing is when you take it off the mat, I'm using the light grip map, you need to go slow. You don't want to rip those connector pieces on your reusable stencil. So I'm just going really slow. And then look, you guys, woo, woo, we got a reusable stencil. I am so excited. This is going to make projects in the future just so much easier. And then I don't, you don't have to cut every single time. Like, yay. Okay. So I just held this down. I'm using my stencil brush from Dollar Tree, my rich black folk art chalk paint. And we are just going to stencil this in and y'all, it worked perfectly. Just as good as any other stencil. I'm so excited that I tried this out for you guys. Oh, I just, I'm so excited. And you could do this with the Cricut Joy too. It, it's the same blade that's in the Cricut Joy. So all you would have to do was cut this down to size. And there we go. Look at how crisp that looks. And then I took my sanding block, sand it over, and I tried a couple different things, but I was like, you know what? Simple is the way to go. So I put a mason jar in there with some florals, wooded spoon, index cards for recipes, and that is in you guys these wood scrap pieces turned out absolutely amazing the Cricut Joy and the Cricut Maker helped these projects go from like drab to fab for sure I'm gonna leave any of the links of the stuff that I used in today's